Hello and welcome, it's me, Nathan, your friendly neighborhood support engineer, and in today's video we're going to be talking about interconnecting two UCMs, UCM A and UCM B. We'll be doing this over a pure SIP trunk. Now, uh, I have right before you a network topology of an actual real-world case scenario and how you would typically set this up. Uh, it is a slightly more complicated because port forwarding will be involved. Uh, you, I'm pretty sure most of our more experienced users will already know how to do that. I actually have a video on uh, uh, port forwarding for our GWN 7000 to our UCM to port uh, to support SIP services for uh, SIP signaling on 5060 and the audio on 10,000 to 20,000. By the way, all those ports can be changed for security purposes, but I do have a video on that and if you want to see that go ahead and click on this link in the top right hand corner and that will show you how to do port forwarding if you haven't done that um, but beyond that you will have to make some SIP changes on the PBX to advertise your public IP and local network scheme behind your router but beyond that I have a whole video that will describe that for you um, looking at what we have here before us we have the public network, which is that little JPEG image above, uh, connected to two GWN 7000s, which is our routers, that are all interconnected to a switch of their own, which those switches are then connected to the LAN port of the UCM, which by the way, if you try to do this to a fresh out of the box defaulted UCM, the LAN port does offer DHCP services and it will start leasing on that network. So before you even plug in that LAN port, make sure you plug in your computer first. Um, you put it into switch mode, that way you disable the DHCP leasing on the LAN port side of the UCM. And I did this because my switch there is a PoE switch, and the UCM is only powered over that LAN port on the PoE switch. So do keep that in mind, you're not going to do this with a fresh out of the box UCM, you will have some initial configuration. Since we're on that topic, on UCM A, I have the extension range of 1000, and on UCM B, I have extension range of 2000. Now, this is very important because you do not want conflicting ranges. If we have any conflicting ranges, it makes our outbound and inbound routing on the UCMs really tough and hard to accomplish without having some special pre-pending. So I'm doing it the easy way and making sure we avoid that just by having non-conflicting extension ranges. Now the call features can conflict, that's perfectly fine, but as long as we have the extension ranges set, we're good. However, if you wanted to do inner communication between call features, like conferencing and stuff like that, you will have to do pre-pending and post-fixing of certain numbers in order to pass them through to each UCM. Or go the easy route and also change those extension ranges too, because you also have that ability. Um, but to make things really simple here, I'm not going to do this over a public IP because there's a lot involved with that with SIPnet, like I said before. Please watch that video if you're interested. Um, we're actually going to set this up all on one local network. So this is what I actually have. I have all my network equipment attached to two switches, and both those switches are going into my GWN 7000. I don't have anything tricky involved here. Everyone's on the same network. It's just my phones are going to be registered to the UCMs via their local LAN IP address. This is something that I recommend that you do, especially if you're barely getting into working with our UCM. That way, uh, you don't have to uh, run the risk of uh, misconfigurations over an actual public network. It's always good to get familiar with setting them up on the local LAN first, making sure it all works and that you're very comfortable with how you have it set up. Then you can go out and start doing some public installations. The only difference here is the peering trunk, which we'll declare on the UCM's alternate IP address. But with that being said, um, I would definitely recommend that you take a screenshot of this topology because I will be referencing it as I'm running through the config and to avoid any confusion, um, I will be mentioning the UCM I'm working on and how I'm connecting it to that UCM. So if you do have this JPEG image in front of you, it'll make complete sense while I'm explaining this video. Go ahead, give yourself a chance, take a print screen. If you don't know how to do that, uh, just open SNP on your Windows machine. If you're if you're using Mac, I'm sorry, you're out of luck. I, I don't know what application they use on Mac. I'm a Windows loyalist here, so forgive me. But beyond that, uh, go ahead, take out your SNP tool, SNP this up, use it as your reference. And with that being said, let's go ahead and dive in. 
All right, we are in UCMA. Our first step is to actually create the peer trunk between UCMA to UCMB. So let's go ahead and dive into that. So we're gonna go to VoIP trunks. Uh, as you can see, I already have a VoIP trunk here. We're gonna demonstrate, even though that you know this is a off-brand IP, um, more than likely this is going to be an actual VoIP trunk. This is just a mimic of one. So keep that in mind here. But typically you will have a VoIP trunk or maybe some analog lines connected. But regardless of that fact, you can uh, just not worry about this. I'm gonna go ahead and create my new peer between UCMB. So we're gonna call it that, UCMB. Uh, Actually, I can't use it. I can use underscore though, UCMB. And then we're gonna put in the IP address. Now obviously this will be a public IP if you're connecting uh, via the internet, but because I'm local, I'll go ahead and put the local IP of that UCM, which is .210. We have a couple caller ID options here that you could choose from. Now, if we're local to the UCM, obviously we're not going to check NAT, but if that UCM is remote, we will be checking NAT because it is technically behind a NAT. So we won't be doing that. We could also put a preferred caller ID or caller ID name. If you don't put them here, your UCM will more than likely just pass that off, as well as even doing auto record if we wanted to do that. But we'll keep it with the basics for now. All right. Now that we have the trunk created, let's go ahead and make sure that we can monitor the status of that trunk. So I'm gonna edit that trunk again for UCMB. I'm gonna to go to the advanced settings here. We're gonna scroll down and enable the heartbeat detection. Now this is what's going to allow you to monitor if our UCMA could monitor the status of UCMB. This will tell us if it's actually there or not. Go ahead and save. Apply changes. All right, now let's go to the system dashboard and check to make sure that we are able to hit it. Now, as you can see, we have the blue indication showing us that it's reachable. Now, just because you have a gray, uh, this is also known as unmonitored. Um, this will either work or not work depending upon if it's connected or not, but because I did not enable heartbeat detection on my VoIP trunk, obviously you won't see that status. Beyond that, our next step is to create inbound and outbound routes. Now this could be the trickiest part, and if you want more detail on how to set up inbound and outbound routes in more detail, I also have a video of that, so you can click on the link here. But for this video, we're going to keep it short and simple. Let's go over to extension slash trunks, outbound routes. So we're gonna be creating our first outbound route. As you can see here, we have our VoIP trunk. Let's go ahead and create the peer trunk. We're gonna call this one UCM underscore B. Now our pattern, this is gonna be very important to our dialing string. Now if we only want to dial the remote extensions, we will put the remote extensions in there. I know that UCMB has the 2000 extension range. So I'm gonna go ahead and put two, one, two, three. That should cover uh, 2000 through 2999, because X is equal to any number zero through nine. Next thing I have to concern myself is the privilege level. I know I barely created my extension, so more than likely they have the default privilege level is set to internal. So I'll go ahead and set them to that. I'll actually show you how we can check that right after this. Now let's go ahead and select the trunk. This will be applied to UCMB. And we'll go ahead and save that change. Now I have a general route on the top and a very specific route on the bottom. I actually don't want to do this. I want to keep the more specific routes on top and the more general on the bottom. So while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and move that upward. So anytime we dial any string, our UCM is going to check it from top to bottom with this sequence number. With that done out of the way, let's go ahead and create the inbound route on this PBX while we're at it. Let's go ahead to inbound routes. Here's our VoIP trunk here. We can go ahead and ignore that and go to UCMB, which there are no routes currently created. Add a route.
And as you know from the diagram, everything on UCMA is the 1000 extension range. So same thing I did almost to the outbound. I'm gonna say, if you're dialing any one of my extensions, which could be 1000 through 1999, we will accept that pattern coming in. Now for the default destination, I'm gonna do by DID. I'm not gonna have it go to any specific source by DID allows me to route numbers as they come in. So if someone dials 1001, our UCM will see it being dialed as 1001 and make that decision to contact the 1001 extension. So anytime you're doing peering, you want to route by DID. That way it makes things really simple. Let's go ahead and save and apply changes. All right, now that we have created the peer, we did the outbound and inbound route for this UCM, let's go ahead and move on to UCMB and also do this here. All right, now that we're in UCMB, let's go ahead and create our peer trunk. Same scheme that I have here, don't worry about this information. Let's go ahead and create the UCMA trunk, UCM underscore A. The host name for this one's gonna be 192.1. 68.1 Oops, almost forgot the IP here 143 Oops, let's correct that dot 143 All right, we're going to keep default settings here Let's go ahead and edit that trunk again that way we can get the monitored status We're going to go to advanced settings enable heart detection all right, we are good on that. Let's go ahead and apply changes. All right, now we're gonna go to system status and dashboard. Make sure it's in blue. There we go, we know it's reachable. Now let's go ahead and do outbound and inbound routes. Now for the outbound routes, I know that since we're working on UCMB, we're gonna be concerned with contacting UCM's A extensions. So with that in mind, when I do an outbound route, I will put the extension range of UCMA, which is 1000. Calling rule name, we'll call this UCM underscore A. Privilege level, I'm gonna set this to internal because I know I barely created my extension even on this PBX. Now I get to select my trunk, UCMA. Now if you do take note, we do have strip and pre-pending. The uh, outbound and inbound routes video will show you actually how to do that, so keep that in mind. Go ahead and save. All right, now that we got the outbound, let's go ahead and do the inbound. Let's go ahead and click over to the UCMA VoIP trunk. Let's go ahead and click add. Now, when we're doing inbound routes on UCMB, we know that our extensions are in the 2000 range, so we're gonna note that for our inbound pattern. Scroll down, choose by DID, and hit save. Let's go ahead and apply changes. All right, now that we have that configured, let's go to the system status, active calls, and let's try testing it. First test I'm going to do is from extension 2000. I'm gonna to try to call 1000. Let's see what happens. There you go. From 2000 calling 1000, I can see my 1000 extension answering. I can pick it up. All right, so we know from calling from UCM B to UCM A, that works, but now let's call from UCM A to UCM B. So from 1000, I'm gonna call 2000. Once again, another successful test. Check in for audio. audio. We are good. And that's UCM here. It was definitely super simple, but you know what? Let's turn it up a notch. A common request that I get, especially when doing pure UCM, is how do I configure it so that if my VoIP trunk ever goes down, I have the option of dialing through the other UCM? Well, let me go ahead and show you. I'm gonna go back to UCMA and get that set up for you and kind of explain logically how we go about doing this.
Now let's say UCMA users wanted to dial out UCMB's VoIP trunk. First off, I'm going to start off by creating another outbound route specifically for UCMB. Let's go ahead and click Add. Let's name this UCMB underscore B. We'll do underscore VoIP trunk. There we go. Now the one thing that you want to keep concerned with is mixing your outbound patterns for your local VoIP trunk with the VoIP trunk of the peer. Now we do this with prefixing and prepending. Now I'm sure I'm sure most of you seen something similar to this. If you want to dial out, press nine first. So I'm going to put nine, seven digits, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Same thing for 10 and 11 digit dialing. Have to dial nine and a 10 digit number, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three. And for 11 digit, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, and one. Privilege level, I'm gonna set this to internal or to my extensions, which by the way, I forgot to show you how to uh, look at your privilege level on your extension, but we'll get to that pretty soon. Let's go ahead and select the trunk. It's going to be UCMB. But before we send those strings out, we want to make sure we strip the first value on that. And the first value is going to be the nine that's being prepended by the user extensions. And as soon as it goes out, the outbound route will actually strip that first value and it should be received to the UCM AZ normal dialing string. So we'll go ahead and hit save. Click OK. And because this is, this is a specific route, like I said before, we're going to throw this guy all the way on top and apply changes. Now that we got the outbound route squared away, we need to make sure that on UCMB, we can accept those digits coming in. So let's go ahead and click over to UCMB. Look at the inbound routes that we have set for UCMA. And as you can see, currently we would only accept destinations to extensions. So what we're going to do here is we're going to edit this inbound route. We're going to include 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Oops, actually we're not going to include nine because we're stripping it on the other one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, and one. Perfect. Now if we're going to allow an incoming dialing stream to be able to be dial a trunk, we have to make sure that we have dial trunk enabled with that DID. And as you can see, we even have a permission level here. And we're going to want this to either match or be greater than our current outbound route for UCMB's VoIP trunk. So let's go ahead and make sure that that's correct. So right now I'm just going to set it to internal. We're going to go ahead and save that and apply changes. Now that's applied. Let's look at my VoIP trunk outbound route. And as you can see, my VoIP trunk actually has international. So if I tried dialing that, it wouldn't work. So let's go ahead back to the inbound route section for UCMA. And let's make sure that when we have that dial trunk, our permission level is going to match that. As you can see, internal is low, international is the highest. Click on that. Let's go ahead and hit save. And boom. It's that simple. So now UCMA has some redundancy if their VoIP trunk ever goes down. They can then hit 9 and then a 7, 10, 11 digit dialing pattern to hit the other remote UCM's VoIP trunks. There is another alternative way we can do failover. So let's go back to the UCMA just real quick. If we didn't want to do nine on our prefix, we can do this through the VoIP trunk as well. So if I click on the VoIP trunk here and say, hey, you know what? Our main trunk that we're gonna go out of is the SIP trunk, but we could add a failover trunk of being UCMB. This is your next best way and actually avoids doing any of the prepin because our UCM will automatically fail over to the next route. So let's go ahead and hit save on that and apply changes. 
Now that we did it to UCMA, practice makes perfect, let's go ahead and do it to UCMB as well. Switch over to UCMB. Go to outbound routes. Now let's create a new outbound route for the prepin. So we're going to do the same prepin. Now, if you want, you could change the number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And one. Now we're going to call this UCM A, oops, underscore A, underscore VoIP trunk privilege level. I'm going to learn this time. We're going to set this to international. Actually, internal. It really depends. We still need to check out that extension privilege level. I'm going to show you how we can do that. Let's go ahead and click on UCMA. And we're going to make sure that we strip that nine before we send it to UCMA. So now that that is set, we'll go ahead and hit save. Make sure that we have the more specific route on top of everything. And we'll apply changes. Now that we have the outbound route set up on UCMB, let's go to UCMA and change our inbound route so that we can allow that dialing string to come in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven digit dialing. So from here, we're going to make sure we're going to be allowed to dial out trunk, and we're going to set this to international and save. Now, in my outbound and inbound routes video, it'll actually show you a bit of this in more detail. But like I promised before, I'm also going to show you how we can verify our extensions permission level. We can just go to extensions edit a single extension and see the permission level here. So like I said before, I already knew it was going to be internal, but just to keep that clear with you guys, let's go ahead and exit out of here. Now we have a fully redundant system. One thing I forgot to do, let's go back to the UCM and also do that failover trunk. So we're going to edit our VoIP trunk on UCMB and make sure we set our UCMA as our failover. By changes. All right, that is getting into the nitty gritty of peer trunking and creating redundancy between peer trunking as well as dialing other UCM's VoIP trunks. The same method will also apply if you're trying to dial to the other UCM's analog lines. It's the same concept, just slightly different. Our next video on this same setup is actually going to be syncing LDAPs so that way each UCM has the contact list and phone book list of the other UCM. And this kind of opens the doors to actually re monitoring remote extensions using eventless BLF, which will be the next video after that. With Peer Trunk and Complete, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe to this channel. That way you can get the latest in GS tutorials. And on that note, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. We hope that you found that video tutorial helpful, and if you did, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to our channel for the latest in video tutorials. I'm Nathan Sharp. You have a good one.